Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is the four-band resistor color code. Our objective is to learn the four-band resistor color code and use it to interpret resistor values. A resistor is a component that resists, controls, or otherwise opposes the movement of electrical charges. This movement of electrical charges is known as current, where current is the effect established through a conductive path by a voltage differential between two points. Without resistance, current would be an uncontrolled, potentially dangerous movement of charges. The oppositional strength of a resistor is the measurable quantity of resistance quantified in units of ohms. More ohms, more resistance, more opposition would yield a small current for a given voltage. Less resistance, less opposition would yield larger current for the same given voltage. This important cause, effect, and opposition relationship is known as Ohm's Law, an important topic we'll spend another entire lecture on in the very near future. Resistors come in several different values, varieties, and shapes, but the one you'll most likely gain early exposure to are mass-manufactured two-terminal devices that come in certain standard size resistance values and power ratings. The small physical size of some resistors prevents manufacturers from printing the nominal or nameplate value on the side using numbers. Small resistors therefore typically employ a four-band color code, which serves to quickly identify the value of the resistor in question. Sadly, more often than not, the interpretation of the four-band resistor color code is employed in lab environments in checking the work of your lazy lab partner. A not insignificant number of troubleshooting scenarios I've witnessed during the course of my experience as a lab instructor simply boils down to the sheer laziness of an individual that doesn't check if they're using the correct components. If the value is written right on the resistor, just read it. You'll be glad you did. The four-band resistor color code is not that hard to learn and you'll find it extremely handy once you've got it down. It does have its idiosyncrasies though, and once you learn to identify and avoid these pitfalls, you'll be surprised how anyone ever lived without it. Speaking of common pitfalls, before we introduce the four-band resistor color code, remember engineering prefixes, where a kilo is 1,000 or 10 to the third power, a mega is a million or 10 to the sixth power? Remember those? Remember how handy engineering prefixes are at expressing, writing, and reading unusually large or small numbers? Well, forget them. The four-band resistor color code has nothing to do with engineering prefixes, so you may as well forget them. For now. We'll come back to how engineering prefixes and resistor values relate in a moment. I had to get that out of the way first because a common pitfall I've observed in using the four-band resistor color code is the misguided notion that it has anything to do with engineering prefixes. The four-band resistor color code has nothing to do with engineering prefixes. It's a secret code, and I'm going to let you in on the secret. Let's talk about the significance of the colors first. The colors represent numbers. The color code is as such. Black is zero. Brown is one. Red is two. Orange is three. Yellow is four. Green is five. Blue is six. Purple is seven. Gray is eight. And finally, white is nine. And some special case scenarios utilize gold and silver. Let's just ignore gold and silver for now. Realize that the numerical scale does not start at 1. It starts at 0 and goes to 9. Remember this. There's a common mnemonic device out there used to remember the order of the color scheme employed by the 4-band resistor color code, but it's a little racy and obviously is in common use today. If you're a pervert and you want to look it up and use this dirty ditty, by all means, pause the lecture and look it up. Don't be surprised, however, when an evolved secular humanist knees you in the genitals for offending their delicate political sensitivities if you use it in front of them. I generally don't like using mnemonic devices, my preferred way of remembering the color scale is to visualize it as a rainbow bookended by a dark and a light end. What's the darkest color you can think of? Black. How much blacker can you get? The answer is none. None more black. Get it? Next darkest color. Brown. Now go through the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. No, indigo is not a color, and there is no such thing as violet. They're both purple. Now what's the second lightest color you can think of? I don't know, maybe like a light shade of gray? Yeah, I need to work on that one. Finally, what's the lightest color you can think of? White. There you go. Ten colors, ten digits. It starts at zero. Pause the lecture and stare at the scale for two minutes without blinking. Because one day I'm going to take it away. Ah, just kidding. You probably freaked out there, didn't you? Now I'm going to leave it up here for the first half of the lecture so you've got ready access to it. I will, however, sometime push you out of the nest so get ready to fly or die on your own. I recommend taking some time to write the color code down so you can staple it to the back of the head of the person that sits in front of you in class. Now that we're aware of the significance of the colors, let's talk about the significance of the first three bands in the four-band resistor color code. 
Again, the color code has nothing to do with engineering prefixes. If you can remember this, interpreting the significance of the first three bands is pretty easy. The first band is the first number. The second band is the second number. And the third band is the number of zeros. It's that easy. Let's say you require a one kilo ohm or 1000 ohm resistor. Again, we're ignoring the fourth band right now. But let's say you send your lazy lab partner to the storeroom to grab a 1000 ohm resistor and they come back with four resistors with the following color codes. Which one is the one kilo ohm or 1000 ohm resistor you need for your circuit? Let's work through this first example together. Brown, black, brown means one zero with one zero. Brown, black, green means one zero with five zeros. Yellow, purple, orange means four seven with three zeros. This is obviously not the one kilo ohm resistor we're looking for. Finally, brown, black, red means one zero with two zeros. Now that we've interpreted the significance of each of the color bands, then and only then do we put these resistor values into proper engineering format if it is appropriate to do so. One zero with one zero behind it is 100 ohms. Nope, that's not the one kilo ohm resistor. One zero with five zeros behind it is one million or one mega ohm. Nope, that's not the one kilo ohm resistor either. Four seven with three zeros behind it is 47,000 or 47 kilo ohms. That's definitely not the one kilo ohm resistor we're looking for. Finally, one zero with two zeros behind it is 1,000 ohms or one kilo ohms. That's the one we're looking for. Dismiss your lab partner with a roll of the eyes and a flick of your hand. Tell him or her to put the first three resistors in drawers marked 100, 1 mega ohm, and 47 kilo ohms. Watch them. They'll just dump all three resistors in the first open drawer they find. This is why you need to know how to interpret the resistor color code. Trust no one, especially not your lab partner. Notice how three of these four resistors look kind of similar and they all start with a brown and a black or a one and a zero and only the third band distinguishes them. If the third band represents the number of zeros, this means the difference between each color is 10 times. If there's any single advice I can give you is to pay attention to the third band. This is the most important of all the bands. If you're using components 10, 100, or even a thousand times the values you're supposed to be using, your circuit is not going to work the way you expect it to. The moral of the story, get a new lab partner. Let's try a couple reps to see if you're tracking before we introduce some of the idiosyncrasies of the four band resistor color code. Consider the sample set of resistors. See if you can interpret the first three bands and express the nominal or nameplate value of these resistors using appropriate engineering format. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Orange, orange, red is three, three with two zeros or 3,300 or more appropriately, 3.3 kilo ohms. White, brown, brown is nine, one with one zero or 910 ohms. Blue, gray, yellow is six, eight with four zeros or 680,000 or more appropriately, 680 kilo ohms. Finally, brown, black, black is one zero with zero zeros or 10. Tricky, eh? Let's try this in reverse. See if you can determine the color code of the first three bands, the four band resistor color code for this selection of resistors. 51 kilo ohms, 6.8 kilo ohms, 470 ohms, and finally 1.8 mega ohms. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. 51 kilo ohms can be written as 5 1 with three zeros. 5 is green, 1 is brown, and 3 is orange. 6.8 kilo ohms can be written as 6 8 with two zeros. 6 is blue, 8 is gray, and 2 is red. 470 ohms can be written as 4 7 with one zero. 4 is yellow, 7 is purple, and 1 is brown. Finally, 1.8 mega ohms can be written as 1 8 with five zeros. 1 is brown, 8 is gray, and 5 is green. That wasn't too hard, was it? Let's now discuss some of the idiosyncrasies of the four band resistor color code. Using the system as illustrated up to this point, it's impossible to represent any resistor value less than 10 ohms. 
It is for this reason the colors gold and silver are occasionally employed in the third band. Gold in the third band means multiply the first two numbers by 0.1, whereas silver in the third band means multiply the first two numbers by 0.01. Consider this set of two resistors with the following color code in the first three bands. Brown, black, gold. Green, blue, silver. Brown is 1. Black is 0. Gold means multiply 1, 0 times 0.1. 1, 0 times 0.1 equals 1 ohm. Green is 5. Blue is 6. Silver means multiply 5, 6 times 0.01. 5, 6 times 0.01 equals 0 0.560, or more appropriately, 560 milliohms. All right, that was pretty fun. Are we ready to move on to the secret fourth band? No, I must test you. For the first set of resistors on the left, Interpret the first three bands and express the resistance value using proper engineering format. For the second set of resistors in the right, determine the colors of the first three bands. Did you write the color code down or commit it to memory like I asked? If not, here it is again and do what I told you to do. Write it down or commit it to memory. You are on your own now. Again, for the first set of resistors on the left, interpret the first three bands of the resistor color code and express the resistance value using proper engineering format. And for the second set of resistors on the right, determine the colors in the first three bands. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Let's take a look at the first set. Yellow, orange, yellow means four, three, followed by four zeros, or 430,000, or more appropriately, 430 kilo ohms. Brown, blue, black means one, six, followed by zero, zeros, or 16 ohms. Orange, white, orange is 3, 9, followed by 3 zeros, or 39,000, or more appropriately, 39 kilo ohms. Finally, brown, orange, gold is 1, 3, times 0.1, or 1.3 ohms. Let's now take a look at the second set. 2.4 mega ohms is 2, 4, followed by 5 zeros. 2 is red, 4 is yellow, 5 is green. 620 milliohms is 0.62, which is 62 times 0.01. 6 is blue. Red is 2, and multiplication by 0.01 is silver. 4.7 kiloohms is 4, 7, followed by two zeros. 4 is yellow. 7 is purple, and 2 is red. Finally, 620 ohms is 6, 2, followed by 1, 0. 6 is blue, 2 is red, and 1 is brown. I must reiterate, the third band is the most important band. Let's say you required a 620 ohm resistor to oppose the current established by a voltage source and accidentally put a 620 milliohm resistor in its place. Say goodbye to whatever you're hooking up because it's going to go up in smoke. Pay attention to the third band and double and triple check your work in low light conditions. True story, I had a student who was colorblind, and I guess there's different levels of colorblindness, but he was like stage five, life-threateningly colorblind. What's crazy is, I never knew he was colorblind until the second quarter of his second year. I have no idea how he did this, but he never had a problem with the resistor color code. He basically taught himself through the course of his life that different shades of gray meant different colors. I was pretty impressed by this. If this dude can do it, you can do it too. I don't know about your lab partner though. I think they're a lost cause. All right, I know you've been sitting on the edge of your seat this whole time waiting for me to tell you what the fourth band means and here it is. The fourth band is the tolerance of the resistor. No, this does not mean the resistor values positive performance regardless of race, gender, class, sexual orientation, or color vision. This means that the resistor was manufactured at a certain level of precision. The robot slaves that manufactured these resistors are given certain resistance values and are not punished if they manufacture something that is close to the desired value. This level of closeness is indicated by the tolerance rating. This is the space where the gold and silver bands typically go. A resistor with a gold band is manufactured to plus or minus 5% of its nominal or nameplate value, and a resistor with a silver band is manufactured to plus or minus 10% of its nominal or nameplate value. Think about it. Gold is customarily considered a more valuable metal than silver, therefore something with a gold rating is better, or manufactured to tighter standards than something with a silver rating. 
If you ever find a resistor with only three bands on it, it means the manufacturer is so embarrassed about their level of precision that they just skip mention of it altogether. This is kind of how I feel about U.S. foreign policy from 19 March 2003 onward. It's not that it was a bad idea. It's that it was a terribly awful idea executed appallingly poorly. A resistor with only three bands means it has a plus or minus 20% tolerance. If you run across a resistor with only three bands, go get another one and pretend it never happened. Numerically, tolerance means you can find a resistor with greater or lesser resistive values than the nominal or nameplate value. For example, consider a nominal 750 ohm resistor with plus or minus 5% tolerance. This means an actual resistor might be 5% less or 5% greater than 750 ohms. Easiest way to calculate this range is to take the nominal value times 0.95. That's something 5% less than 100% and then the nominal value times 1.05 where that's something 5% greater than 100%. Therefore, a resistor with a 750 nominal value could have a bottom range of 712.5 ohms and a top range of 787.5 ohms. Now, before you get all up in the robot slave's face for making such a shoddy 750 ohm resistor, stop to consider the next highest and the next lowest resistor in the standard resistor set. You don't need to memorize the standard resistor set, but you will over the course of the time learn it. Basically, not every size of resistor is made, and there's a funny numerical sequence that occurs for a reason. The next lowest resistor in the standard set is 680 ohms, and the next highest resistor is 820 ohms. Now, consider the range offered by 680 and 820 ohm resistors manufactured with a plus or minus 5% tolerance. A nominal 680 ohm resistor with plus or minus 5% tolerance could be anywhere from 646 ohms to 714 ohms. Whereas a nominal 820 ohm resistor with a plus or minus 5% tolerance could be anywhere from 779 ohms to 861 ohms. Do you see what's going on here? The tolerance is there for a reason. There's a degree of overlap between the 680, 750, and the 820 ohm resistors. Just by being choosy about which resistor you grab from a roll, you basically have a complete unbroken spread of resistive values. Regarding component tolerances and lab practices, do the calculations for your expected observations using the value of components you are actually using. There's no sense in plugging in 750 ohms if your 750 ohm resistor actually has a resistance value of 712.5 ohms. Do the calculations first and don't be surprised by this stuff. I don't think we need to spend much more time on the topic of tolerance besides a reminder that you should not judge your lab partner by their race, gender, class, sexual orientation, or color seeing ability, but rather by their ability to assemble a functional circuit with the correct components. All right, that's all I've got for you for this lecture. Final note about the color code is this. Use it. Don't just use it for checking your lab partner's shoddy work. Use it for wires. The circuits you're building are going to get real complicated real quick. And if every wire in your circuit is the same shade of red, this is a recipe for disaster. Assign each point of connection a number. Anything connected to node 0 gets a black wire. Anything connected to node 1 gets a brown wire, and so on. The point is, there's an existing standard, and you may as well make use of it to simplify troubleshooting. In conclusion, this lecture took a look at the four-band resistor color code. We learned the colors represent numbers, and the bands represent resistive values, multipliers, and tolerances. You should be able to interpret the value of an unknown resistor employing the resistor color code and be able to identify the color code of a known resistor. Remember to review this material as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you use the correct components. Thank you very much for your attention and interest and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.